In a world where cars can sometimes seem increasingly homogenous, the Morgan three-wheeler stands out as a beacon of bonkers alternative thinking. It's both bizarre and brilliant. And now there is a new one, called the Super 3. But it has a car engine mounted inboard instead of the old SNS V-twin slung out the front. With 118 brake horsepower and 110 pounds foot of torque, it has a decent amount more grunt, but its triangular footprint is also slightly larger. And there are digital instruments. There's not even any wood under the bodywork. So with these modern updates, has it lost some of its quirkiness? Or is it just as much of a motoring maverick as ever? Here to talk us around all the details is the company's ever amiable head of design, John Wells. John, thank you so much for talking us around this. I think the last time we were chatting was on a Welsh hillside with the CXT, so this is slightly, slightly drier and kind of <laughs> more congenial surroundings in some ways. Um, new three-wheeler, Super 3. Super 3. Quite different. It is, yeah. For, I mean, it's sort of the same, but, but actually the more you look around it, it's really pretty different starting, I suppose, with the engine, but the monocot. Where did you start? To be honest, we started with the engine. Um, you, you, you know, you hit the nail on the head. The first thing we did was set out to explore um, the powertrain for this car, the right one, and that has completely informed the character of the vehicle. We first started looking at motorcycle powertrains. That seemed like the obvious place to start. So we looked at what was available. Modern motorcycle engine typically has integrated gearboxes. With that, you have challenges such as how do you splice in a reverse gear? How do you overcome the sequential gearbox? And you know, there's a re-education. How, how do you drive a car with a sequential gearbox you know, on, a, on a test drive? Um, and we soon realized that the engineering and development, that there's so many compact inline small three-cylinder engines out there that maybe we should look towards the car engine, the car derived route as well. The last V-twin was a, was a two litre engine. Um, this is a 1500, um, inline three cylinder produces about 118 brake horsepower. Um, it's important to know it's naturally aspirated, there's no turbo, um, and that's quite intentional. We wanted a car with a sort of really linear power that you can play with, um, and character was everything. The, the character of the last three wheeler is so prevalent, it's so strong. The big firing V-twin, there's so much torque, you can almost drive in any gear. Um, this is a slightly different proposition. This is more power, it's higher revving. The cylinders have halved in size, haven't they? I mean, you've got sort of, it's bizarre, isn't it? You've gone down to more cylinders, but yes. Yeah, and, and it's a completely different character. You have that lovely three cylinder sound, that nice sort of induction warble, you know, it's like half a flat six. It sounds, it sounds great, especially when it gets up in the revs and it's got this rasp to it. The way we kind of liken it quite often is that, you know, if the last um, three-wheeler was a, was a scrambler, you know, great for a blast around Vista on a Sunday afternoon, this is more of an adventure bike. This is, you know, effortless power and much more dynamic compliance. And this is the car you really want to go and have an adventure with. Um, and that, like I say, has really informed the vehicle going forward. I'll, I'll talk to you about some of the accessories and some of the extras, some of the, the windscreens and the interior environment. This is a car that is built to escape with. Um, recognising that's, that's exactly how Morgan three-wheeler owners do use their cars. Because that's one of the things that's always sort of pleased me enormously, but also slightly amazed me that these weren't just bought as sort of, I suppose, curiosities to sit as part of a collection because they're unlike anything else. You know, people buy them to use them, don't that, they? That's, that's absolutely right. Um, and <laughs> it's amazing seeing just how people do use them. They have incredible adventures in them and they meet up with their friends and they go touring. And again, not like the motorcycle world, you know? These are, these are cars to be outdoors in, um, meet with your friends and have these epic touring adventures. Um, even the way we've decided to display these cars at launch, we've gone for some very, very colourful palettes that you know, are a complete expression of individuality. You don't drive this car to be understated. This is about embracing your eccentricity. We've then dressed some of them very traditionally. You know, this is a Morgan, don't worry. <laughs> you know, it's, it's made in Pickersley Road in the same red brick buildings and it's, you know, built alongside the plus four and the plus six. And we've really embraced some of the traditional details, these sort of honey tinted um, lenses here, British Racing Green nice number boards on the side. And then the third set of specification options have been really focused at touring and adventure. 
Um, a lot of the same sort of flavors in our CXT, a recent overland project we did. Um, so we have luggage racks and taller windscreens and even some of the apparel and clothes that we're, we're offering. So this is now inboard, so that's obviously changed the kind of the, the way the rest of the car is, is put together. And we've got a Morgan, Morgan first in, in this, haven't we, in terms of we've got a monocoque. We have, we have got a monocoque. And, and actually everything, even from the design and engineering approach, again, was influenced by that engine. One of the, one of the merits of the current three-wheeler is that your eye is drawn to that engine. It almost dazzles you from the, the rest of the vehicle structure. But, but here, we, the vehicle structure that was required to hold and mount that engine has become the aesthetic of the car. And we've ended up with this three-part platform. The first part are these big aluminium castings on the front. So this is an aesthetic decoration. These are solid cast aluminium blocks of, of material. And these are trying to do a lot of jobs for us. So primarily they are the engine mount. So these are encapsulating that engine. And fundamentally we wanted all of that engine and the visual mass of the car to sit behind the center line of the front wheels. This is something that it was very important to us. We, we wanted that weight behind the wheels, so this car was towed by its front wheels, something Morgans have always done. As soon as we were to put the body and engine in front of the wheels, you get a very different aesthetic where it sat on its wheels and has less of an exciting, engaging kind of look to it. So everything was positioned behind those wheels, even to the point that the odd little bit of engine, like this little pulley wheel that was sticking out the front, we had to put a cover on it. Um, I wanted a little painted spiral where it was spinning, but um, we had to put a cover on it. But we even have that protruding because we were so adamant that we wanted the body to sit behind the wheels. Now you said that, I'm sure owners won't take it off and paint the spirals on it at all. I'm sure <laughs> I'm that would really happen, hope so. Yeah, yeah. Um, so, so yeah, first of all, holding the engine. Second of all, they're holding all of the corner packages. So you can see all the wishbones, the push pull rod suspension, all of that mechanical interest. All of these lines and arms are all quite thin, and that's for good reason, because they're allowing the air to pass through. Because the third function of these castings is to divert the air into the radiators, because now we have to manage a cooling system, which we didn't have before. So that's really, really informed the whole front of the car. And we're really pleased with what we've ended up with. We've got this very mechanical, functional face that like the old car, you can read the purpose of the, of the front end. Yeah, that's it. There's, there's something to sort of understand and read with your eyes and, and uh, there's an honesty to it as well, which, we, which is really important to us. Let's deal with the wheels next, because they are, they're very cool. They've gone up in size, haven't they? So 20 inch wheels. We've enjoyed loads of micro triumphs and victories on this program that we're really proud of, but the wheels are definitely up there um, and the tires in particular. So we've taken the engine inboard. We've increased our range of, um, uh, our percentile range of ergonomic suitability. So you can get taller, taller passengers in there. So you'll fit in it. It's also sort of squarely aimed at the American market and the European markets. So we've got a full range of uh, adjustment there. Um, and like I say, it's got an engine and a cooling pack, but we've managed to do that without growing the car too much. We have grown a bit though, hundred mil. And the old wheels, the 19 inch wheels that we had previously, were just looking a little bit lost on there proportionally compared to the whole car. And it sometimes just these little subtleties make a big difference. And uh, so we, we managed to persuade uh, Avon Cooper, Cooper Avon to work with us. And we've commissioned our own tire, um, which now sits on the front of this car. So we have a larger contact patch than before. You can see straight away, as soon as you walk up to it, it's like, that is a, that's a much more serious tire. I mean, so if, if, if you haven't seen a three-wheeler before, you might think that's a crazy thing to say because it's, you know, they're still, narrow little tires but they're definitely much beefier than before you know something the design team and myself are really pleased where we were able to to work to get a, a big balloon tire wall and a really sort of vintage heritage tread pattern and make a very traditional looking tire um, Cooper Avon have even bought back the Speedmaster branding so we've got this great heritage branding on the side um, and these are unique to us and Moreover, they're speed rated and performance rated to make a modern tire. You know, we did pull very briefly at the thread of what is out there. You know, should we be looking at off the shelf car tires? A lot of modern EV vehicles have tall, skinny tires. But as soon as you got to that sort of wide car tire aspect, it just changed the whole language of the car. And um, for us, the, the front wheels are such a big feature of this vehicle. We needed to invest the time there. And the design of the wheel, I mean, I'm getting, there's a bit of, 
Uh, I'm thinking slightly, I suppose it was sort of was it XJ220 or EB110, perhaps <laughs> sort of turbo fan. There's all sorts of yeah, things yeah. in there. W124, there's loads, of, there's loads of sort of references to sort of historic wheels. In truth, um, much like a lot of this car, the, the look of these wheels has been influenced heavily by the engineering constraints um, and challenges that we've been presented with. Um, in this instance, I mentioned that we've really worked hard to get the ride and handling character correct for the amount of power and the style of vehicle. Um, and through early simulations at the outset of the program, the engineering team really quickly realized we want to put a lot of the geometry as far outboard as possible, the brakes and the corner packages and where the uprights sit. Um, brilliant for ride and handling, not so great for designers that typically love nice deep dish wheels and negative offset to play with. So um, we've actually got these wheels where a lot of the structure of the wheel is really, really outboard and quite flat. Um, but to be honest, we've just embraced that. We've looked at the aerodynamic effects on the wheels. We've got some negative sort of concave surfacing, which kind of reflects the, the side panels on the car a little bit as well. And um, quite a unique looking wheel that seems to sort of cross that line between modern and, and heritage. So. I think it's cool. And then we've got the covers here. We call those the Centurion mudguards. They've got a very regal sounding name, and that's because of the, the little extended neck at the back of them. Um, anyone who's driven a a three-wheeler on a wet day through a big puddle whilst turning to be quite familiar with that sort of a uh, face paint that you end up with <laughs> yeah so that's quite a functional but um we actually like the vertical line versus some of the other vertical lines around the car we we think they sort of blend in quite nicely you'll see on the inside here there's a chamfer that runs around that that wheel arch and that is to allow us every single spare millimeter of turning circle that we can get from the front of the car so um, one of the things we wanted to improve on was the turning circle. Again, many three-wheeler owners will know that you steer with a throttle in one of these cars and you can actually turn very much on the spot, but were you to not brake traction and, you know, uh, turn with the wheels, um, there is a chamfer there which really allows the wheel arch to get close. Even with that, um, we've got the vertical sides of the radiator, the constraint of the turning circle on the car not wanting to get too wide, to fit on things like car transporters, but also to get through some of the doorways in the factory that are <laughs> built 100 years ago. Um, and through that journey, we've got the radiator sitting outboard of the castings and the engine and the wheels here. We ended up with this requirement to have this sort of very flat face on the side of the car. We couldn't put too much form in here. Um, and again, we kind of embraced that constraint and, and ran with it. And we've ended up with what we call the side blades, because they sound really dramatic. Um, our homologation team didn't like that. They thought it sounded too dangerous, but we're just going to embrace that. Um, so we've got these side blades, and again, these, these hopes do a lot of work for us. So primarily, they're capturing the air that comes in the front, but then you can see on the top side and on the sides here, they're all vented in such a way that they're extracting as much air as possible. They're a bit like sort of barge boards or intakes on a jet engine. They're doing a lot of aerodynamic work for us. And they're, they're quite interesting, aren't they, aesthetically? Because when you, if you walk up to the car from certain angles, you just, you can't see them yeah. at all. They just sort of disappear. Yeah. And then at other times you're sort of, you think, how on earth could I miss that? And, you know, it's really <laughs> it's sort of very obvious kind of yeah, thing strapped it. to the side of it. And you can have these in different colors as well. That's, that's right. So uh, we, exactly, we, we tried to embrace that a little bit further. We thought, well, We've got this very, very technical, mechanical front end, and then we've got this very smooth, organic back end. It's almost like a, a car of two halves, quite intentionally. So you've got the business end and then the sort of occupant end, horse and car almost, or pod racer, you know, with the engines out the front. And we, um, so we kind of thought, let's, let's keep with that technical geometry on the side of the cars with these very geometrically simple rectangles, um, which relate to the circular wheels and some of the triangular graphics and create a bit of a separation and then we embrace them further with these little fixing clips you see around the car. These are featured not just on the side panels but everywhere else and they allow people to interchange how they use the car. So we offer luggage racks that clip into place, it's panniers that we've developed with, a, with an amazing British brand called Malay London. Um, we've done this really heavy duty wax canvas pannier that clips on the side 
You could have a body. with a cup holder. With a cup holder, actually, yeah. It's a, an outboard cup holder. World first I mean, for Morgan. There's a cup holder on this car. That's the first time we've done that in a hundred years. Um, I mean, you have to spend some money to get there. It's not the cheapest cup holder. <laughs> Was it about like seven hundred pounds for a cup holder? But it's yeah, there we go. You know. <laughs> but nonetheless, we have a, we have a cup holder. Um, You're so, spending a lot of money, you don't get a fourth wheel. So you know, hey, it's that's gonna... it. That's it. I mean, to be honest, we've we've really looked at use cases. You know, how do how do people use three wheelers and with the outgoing three-wheeler, we, we'd see them commonly come back to the factory or at events and shows, and the way people have improvised solutions for touring is just amazing. People were lashing bungee cords on places and makeshift luggage racks and tall windscreens, and what we've decided to do is just embrace that and design in these solutions from the outset. So those clips enable different windscreens. You can see some sort of low honey-colored deflectors here. You could have those in clear, you could have none. There's some tall ones that we do that you can have for, you know, really, really covered up driving there. Um, get rid of them entirely? Or get rid of them entirely and just wear a pair of goggles. Um, I like these ones actually. When you're driving around the B roads, you can kind of look over them and, you know, hunt for the corners and then on the motorway, just duck down and get out of the wind. Um, so yeah, it's, it's, uh, they've really given us a good opportunity, those, um, those universal fixings around the car. And presumably, some, a little bit of that must have come from CXT where we were last talking about exactly. because that was I was saying to somebody the other day how well designed or thought out that was sort of and BD who was obviously That's from it. Rally Road UK and well, kind of all the little things that he'd clearly done and just went well you you want this and that so, and so at the time we're you know we're, we're deep into the, the core of the development of this project as well so you know we had these sat alongside the CXTs in the in the thing and there's you know there's no doubt they didn't influence each other um, and that, that was really a, yeah that was really relevant actually this this particular specification in front of us is quite a traditional specification. Um, if uh, anyone sees our launch film, they'll see that we've chosen to display this car with three different themes. They're not models, it's exactly the same car. That car there is the contemporary theme. So we've got this very bright coral colored exterior with a matching interior. And that kind of grabs your attention, turns your head, and you, hopefully people go, what on earth? Wow, that's, that's exciting. And then very quickly or reassured with the British Racing Green and the roundels and the more traditional aesthetics. Um, and the third car, which we haven't got here today, is a bit of a take on the CXT. It's in a desert sand color with lots of black laser cut luggage accessories and, and fittings. And that car is really designed to accentuate the touring element of, of three-wheeler ownership. So. Um, right, let's get back into some of the, the details again. Before we go down here, um, these little sort of snail's eyes um, up here, what are they, what are they all about? <laughs> So this was another really fun challenge. The position lights on a, on a car have quite a, a wide angle visibility requirement. So quite understandably, position lights and indicators, they need to sort of reflect 80 degrees sideways so you can see a car emerging from a junction. A headlight doesn't. It's got a 40 degree view and angle, we're much, much tighter together. Had we left the position lights and indicators within the headlight cluster, the whole headlight would have had to be up here or way further forward to look past these wheels. Um, we wanted them to be nice and low slung and, and pulled in. Um, so by separating the position light into these little machined um, the aluminium sort of turrets here, uh, we actually call them snail's eyes. The marketing team have rebranded them turrets, but snail's eyes. Um, they sit just above there now. And then these therefore can look past the wheel arch, whereas these can look forward. So this is working with the constraints, hopefully in quite a dynamic way. Um, and it's actually informed the design and they've become quite a feature actually, which we're, we're quite pleased with. The, moving on to the interior, we've got um, three different sort of materials. So we've got leather in this and then there's a technical. Yeah, that's, that's right, that's right. So we've really started to look at um, some of the materials we use in Morgan. For some time now, um, the team have wanted to celebrate leather a little bit more rather than bathing our cars in leather. So we tend to have high quality leathers just at the points of contact anyway. Um, with this particular car, the Super 3, we've developed uh, a new, two new leathers actually. One very typical sort of automotive leather that we've really looked at the water resistance um, capabilities of that, as well as some really striking colours actually. And then we have a premium leather, which is almost a saddle leather. It's like a natural bridle leather, just got a great durability properties and weather resistance again. Recognising this cockpit is completely exposed, um, so we've really retuned and refined our leathers, our leather rothering in this car. But we also, like you say, do a technical fabric, um, which is, a, again, highly waterproof, um, very, very durable. You know, you could stand on the seats or have stuff flying around the car and, again, taking the sort of wind and rain and all the abuse and stay looking really fresh. 
um, vegan as well, so that's sort of another world first. <laughs> so yeah, looking at all the different material options inside the car. But you'll see that the upholstery and the leather is just at these points of contact. And everything else you see is actually the, the structure of the vehicle. So all of these metal aluminium sides here, this is the chassis. And as you, as you mentioned earlier, Morgan's first ever monocoque. Um, and that's for, that's for quite a good reason, really. Um, firstly, you know, there's, there's no waste. All the, all the structure is the bit you actually see. There's no B panels and over trimmings just for the sake of aesthetics. We've, we've you know, made the structure the visual element of the car. But what it also means is the floor pan area in the middle, which is sheet and fold laser cut aluminium, quite a familiar technology to us, can be recalibrated in future quite easily. So for example, if you wanted to change the drivetrain, um, you, could, you could do that. So under that side you'll see is our fuel tank. Under this side we've got a, a void, which is a convenient handy space for, uh, for storage, but um, also, like I say, leaves opportunity for future you're going to build an EV, buddy. I mean, that, that's, that's, what it, that's what you're leading up to. It's all there for an EV. Ultimately, we've invested in this platform um, and, you know, we're a small company and investing in the future is really important for us. That's a yes, then. These... <laughs> <laughs> well, look, we make no secret about it. Morgan is investing in electrification. Um, you have to. And it's really important to us. And actually, something we're really excited about. We created in 2016, I believe, a, a fully electric EV3. Um, and for many of us at the, at the Morgan Motor Company, that was kind of the one that got away. We'd love to have seen that um, appearing in reality. This new platform is kind of paving the way for that technology to be as part of one of our core product pillars. Um, Three-wheeler represents not just the entry level um, product range for Morgan, but also a bit of a brand halo effect. And it's a great product platform to start introducing new technologies like electrification before it becomes range wide in future. Um, we definitely see a big opportunity for an ICE engine powered, naturally aspirated, super engaging analog, you know, petrol engine car, but there's no doubt about it. This platform does give us opportunity to recalibrate for electrification in the future. And talking about electrics, whilst we're here, uh, the dials in here, digital. <laughs> yeah. Look at, you like what I did there? That We've was got kind some of digital dials. Um, we're really pleased with these actually. So as these start up, they've got a really interesting intro sequence and everything as you can see is digital but there's no 3D fake effects. It's block color, it's, it's traditional. It's like the, the dawn of electrification and early Game Boy Tetris screens and the graphics almost. It's a, it's a beautiful, uh, well, we're really pleased with the way that the dials, the dials have come through. You see the fuel tanks either side, as, the, as you go through your fuel, they drop down, almost like the, the liquid's draining into the vehicle. There's a little marker there that chases around the outside as a very simple visual indicator of you know, where you are in the rev range. When that hits the top, it bounces red and comes back again, and they're, um, they're really exciting for us. And set in really lovely yeah. aluminium. In these aluminium, cast aluminium tunnels. Um, one thing that we tried to do, despite a very aggressive bill of materials target is make sure that we weren't sacrificing on, on quality. Um, so everything that you see is cold to the touch, it's metal. These are cast aluminium, much like the castings on the front. All the switch gear is very analog, very tactile. We've got the bomb release button in the middle to start the car. Um, the only big difference really in terms of the switch gear from the outgoing three-wheeler is that this is IP65 rated. You can, I think you can jet wash it. In fact, we did jet wash it. We drove these down a beach um, uh, as part of the, uh, the press content gathering. And uh, we kind of finished the day thinking, we can't take these back to the uh, workshop looking like this. And uh, the chaps there kindly let us jet wash and we did just jet wash them all out. And um, the proof was in the pudding. They, uh, <laughs> they still work, so <laughs> that's good. Below the toggle switch and everything, we've got fly off handbrake still for like the last one, which yeah. I, I love, is great. And then gearbox, so still the MX-5, five-speed gearbox? So to be honest, engine backwards, this is very familiar territory to us. Mazda five-speed gearbox, there's a prop shaft behind that. That has a bevel box just behind the seats here, which converts the drive 90 degrees, and then there's a belt for the final drive at the back. Um, very similar in mechanical makeup to the outgoing three-wheeler. Um, we we have re-explored every component along that chain. The bevel box in particular, we've, um, we've completely re-engineered that. So we have a, I wouldn't say it was silent, and to be honest, we're glad it's not, because it's nice hearing all the cogs whirring and the noise, but we've taken out some of the high pitch frequency and a bit of the irregularity, and it has a much more sort of solid feel to the thing. And the belt's now got carbon fiber in it. That's it, it's a Kevlar reinforced belt, um, which is a, you know, prevents stretch and also just 
keeps everything as it should be back there, not rattly and, uh, and quiet. Other things on the interior, in fact, it's not in this one, it's in the one over there, but there is sat-nav. Yeah, another world first for Morgan. Um, we've got a, a, a really good, good fun partnership, actually, with a company called Beeline Moto that have worked with us on a, a navigation solution for Morgan. But it's not a, a big screen with all the information in the world. It's this beautiful little round device that it's essentially got two elements. It's got a number that counts down and an arrow that points. And when the number reaches zero, whichever way the arrow is pointing, you make the turn. And it, it runs directly from Google Maps. So it's, you know, it's live and up to date. And actually, it's all, it's all you need. I have one on my motorcycle. And to be honest, I don't, I don't know. We're not missing anything else, really. That's it. It's just here in front of the driver um, on the column. Um, this has been, you know, we've put a lot of attention to the controls in general. So as with the last three-wheeler, the seat is entirely fixed. That's important for the, the visual relationship between the cockpit and the exterior. On this car, all the controls you bring to you. So the steering wheel has got reach and rake adjustment. Additionally to that, you can change the steering wheel. All of our steering wheels are motor liter steering wheels, and you can have a 14 inch or a 13 inch wood or leather um, with dish, without dish. So you can pick the wheel that suits you, suits you best. And then the pedals themselves are adjustable, which isn't new, the last ones were as well. Although this time it's not a bolted operation underneath the car for 20 minutes. It's a quick release on a slider. So fully customizable cockpit and controls. And to be honest, one of the, you know, one of the first things we did, we had the engine sat there and we positioned some wheels in the workshop. And then the next thing we did was seats and interior. And we had bits of wood and boxes and bricks. And we were just setting out that, that interior from an ergonomic point of view. Um, and it was, it was, they became our hard points really early on. So we think we've considered the, the range of comfort um, quite extensively. And I've noticed that you've got, I mean, you say there's, there's so many accessories for this. There's the Globetrotter sort of cases that you've designed in collaboration with them, but also some clothing as well, I think, for people that yeah. want, the, sort of want the, the full look. We've got really carried away over the last two years, actually. It's not until you come to talk about it, but um, now that we've been working with um, Malay London, um, just this awesome motorcycle-inspired apparel that's really, really fit for purpose. Um, and it's this really thick wax cotton jackets. We've invented a new piece of clothing called a knee guard, which clips onto your jacket and you look quite cool. We're hoping to reinvent this kind of look when you're outside of the car, but in truth, when you're in the car, anything that hits your chest tends to run down. So drive a Morgan three-wheeler in the rain and you soon have a wet crotch and these, uh, these knee guards sit over your lap and tuck you all in. You actually get to a really nice place and you know, they're, they're really good fun. So we've got new clothing that matches some of the panniers on the car as well. It's a um, more sophisticated tartan rug over the legs, isn't it? Basically <laughs> that. But <laughs> no, it's, it's, it's super cool. And it's been, it's been really good fun actually, sort of exploring some of the use cases of these cars and then trying to come up with solutions to answer them. It's been, it's been great actually. And then moving down the sort of the back of the car here, we've obviously got this lovely sort of boat tail and then another aluminium casting at the back as well. And that's right. And trying to, um, you know, trying to keep in, in keeping with the rest of the car, we're trying to get as many, the job to do as many things for us, as, uh, every part to do as many jobs as possible. This rear casting is acting as the, the bracing device to bolt the two sides of the car together. It also becomes the, the hinge point for the boot lid. So the boot kind of concertinas within that. If you were to have one of our exterior luggage racks, it also hinges off there. It's the number plate light. And actually set in here is this tiny little laser light, looks like Johnny Five's mouth or Knight Rider or something. And that's doing our fog and reverse bit. And then we've got our Morgan name stamped into there as well. Um, which is quite industrial and quite in keeping with some of the rest of the design inspirations on the car. And obviously on that side, you know, we were used to having two exhausts down the side from a V-Twin before. Now we've just got a single exhaust, but it's still pretty cool coming out that side. We have one exhaust shooting through the car and that fires out the side and it's just cut off straight like a race car. The only way we're actually, we're, we're sort of um, able to get away with such a sharp tipped, sort of brutal looking exhaust is because this rib design feature around the side um, protects anyone from touching that edge of the exhaust. So um, we've been able to sort of make that work in our favor there. And we have this ceramic coated white or black exhaust piercing through the side. This, this feature actually is, is something we're really pleased with as well. This has taken a lot of inspiration from um, sort of jet fuselages and belly tank racers of the sort of mid early century, whereby 
they'd bring two halves of a pressed shell together and instead of seam welding, they'd sort of flange them and bolt them together, like the central spine on a Bugatti Atlantic or something. Um, and so we've sort of made a play on that with this rib feature through the middle. Rear wheel under here, same size as before, it was 195, 55, 16. That's very comparable. That is a car derived tire on the back, much larger contact patch. Um, and, uh, and yeah, that's, that's fairly well unchanged underneath there. Um, Interestingly, this whole back end of the car, we actually did a lot of aerodynamic work here as well, not just at the front end of the vehicle. And what we were finding is this area was trapping a lot of sort of turbulent air and causing quite a bit of drag. So behind the number plate, you can see a tiny little slotted mouth, which is evacuating the air from that area. So it doesn't sort of act as a carrier bag going down the road. And that's actually helping eject the air out the back of the car too. So lots of them. Um, I think that's, that's testament to some of the upfront engineering we did. This, these particular cars here are actually sort of 12 months old in terms of their design status maturity, their engineering prototypes, EPs. Um, and you know, we're now at the dawn of production on these cars. So um, these are actually quite old cars. And the reason we've managed to keep them fairly true to how they're gonna be is a lot of upfront digital design work from the engineering and design teams. So everything on this car was not only designed in a digital environment, um, but we also did all of our analysis, CFD, CAE, um, everything digitally before we committed to production. So. And in terms of performance, which sort of seems somehow slightly irrelevant, but, but we're looking at the same sort of performance as before. Uh, no, this is, this is it's definitely a quicker car um, and dynamically um, quite a bit different actually. It's the last car, the outgoing car was around about 68 horsepower. This is 118 horsepower. The weight is comparable. This is around the 600 mark. It's about 620 um, at the moment. And uh, the acceleration is you know, under seven seconds. Top speed about 130 miles an hour, which is plenty. <laughs> and, and I mean, to be honest, we did, when we were exploring the powertrains, there were um, you know, bigger capacity and more powerful engines available to us. But for us, it was really important that the, the ride and handling and the character and the driving was fun and enjoyable. And um, it wasn't just about having the biggest top trumps numbers on, on paper. Um, it was about being able to enjoy driving the car. Um, and it just felt like the sweet spot for us. John, thank you very much indeed. I can't wait to drive it at some point. <laughs> <laughs> no problem at all. Thank you. The price for a Super 3 hasn't been confirmed yet, but is likely to start at around £40,000, which is comparable with the previous iteration. That is, of course, before you get stuck into the configurator, yes, there is one, and start adding some of the many options. Would you go contemporary or traditional with your colour scheme? Paired back or panny it up? Full screen or none at all? Whatever you choose, I think it's fair to say that you'll still stand out in the best possible way, driving a Morgan with three wheels. Thank you very much indeed for watching that. You can see Matt over there filming all the B-roll. Please do remember to subscribe to Carfection if you haven't already. You don't want to miss out when we finally get to drive this. And do hit that notification icon as well, that little bell icon. It all really does help us. And we're trying to hit a million subscribers just as soon as possible. Thank you very much. See you next time.